Welcome back to building a web server. So in the previous videos, we discussed how we can interact with our environment by making system calls to start by talking out to the real world. In particular, we looked at how to connect to the internet and start chatting with someone or communicating with someone over the internet. And in this case, we're gonna really hone in onto HTTP and what it looks like for us to truly now be a web server. Okay. So recall that in the last video on steps to accept TCP IP network connections, that we performed this sequence of system calls to perform uh, creating a socket, binding that socket, listening on that socket, and then finally accepting a connection. This is how we connected out to the internet and received someone who wants to start talking to our web server. So we accepted that connection. Uh, we can imagine, right, that someone connected up to our uh, system. They're talking to our system. Now they're talking kind of in some sense directly to our process, to our program that we've built. And they've connected. So the accept system call went through. We got a result of someone that just tried to connect and they send us an HTTP request. They send us get slash HTTP 1.0. Um, so now what? What's the, how does this relate into this web server that we're building? Okay, so we've accepted their connection. It's come back on system call or on file descriptor number four, as we can see from the look into the kernel. Well, the next thing that we can do is we can just write straight to that file descriptor. We can do write for send it HTTP 1.0200 OK for uh, a RN RN. Say that, hey, that's 19 bytes long. Send that message. Uh, close the file descriptor, which basically means, okay, I'm done sending stuff, I'm done receiving stuff and we're done with the connection. We've accepted the connection, we've talked back to the connection, we closed it. We didn't even read from the connection, we don't care what they said to us. We are just statically returning 200 okay. We just say, okay, you sent me this request, I say okay. Okay, so the, the file descriptor gets closed, which kind of completes the connection, and we know we're done talking to them, and we get our HTTP response. So as we saw with HTTP before, we send a HTTP request, now we just sent an HTTP response. We've talked back into the internet, given them a response. We've in some sense truly interact with the real world, talking over the internet, saying okay to whatever request you just made. Now the thing to realize is that we didn't actually uh, do any sort of understanding of that HTTP request. If they send us just complete garbage, well guess what? We're gonna reply HTTP 1.0, 200 okay. We don't even care if they send us an HTTP request. Based on that logic, every single time we're saying HTTP 1.0, 200, OK. It's a very simple web server. Um, it, in some sense, does more than HTTP since it's willing to respond to non-HTTP traffic. Um, but it serves our needs of kind of fulfilling the requirement of being an HTTP web server, in some sense anyways, at a very basic level. OK, but what happens if we want to start understanding HTTP requests? If someone, for example, says get slash flag HTTP 1.0, and we want to imagine that we're not just going to return 200 OK with nothing else every single time and just statically return a response, we want to understand their HTTP requests and give an intelligent response based on whatever it is the logic of our web server is. OK, so we accept their connection as they send us their request. And this time, rather than just immediately writing and closing, we're going to read the request. That's the first step. We need to know what they're asking us to do. So in this case, we read that get slash flag HTTP 1.0, the RN RN. Um, in this case, we were kind of imagining that we're willing to read 256 bytes of a request. We get 19 bytes in total when we perform that read operation, which is totally fine. Um, and maybe the logic of our web server says, okay, well, I'm gonna parse that web request. And we don't see this at a system call level, because um, again, system calls are just interacting with the real environment, but we still do have the ability to you know, like move those electrons around and change memory and registers on the CPU. We can perform computation on this string of data and infer that we need to extract the slash flag part. We can uh, do that in user space to pull out that slash flag part. And we can perform another open, uh, we can perform another system call in response to that and perform the open system call, right? So in some sense, we, we did a read system call to get data, or we did manipulations on that data, we did parsing of that data, and we've decided in response, our user space program has decided in response to perform another interaction with the environment, perform another system call in response. Okay, so we open the slash flag file. We say we want to be able to read it, get that on file descriptor 5 as we saw before. 
Um, we decide to read from a file descriptor 5. We're willing to read 256 bytes. Let's imagine slash flag just contains all caps flag. Uh, it was four bytes long. And now we again continue to just like interleave between uh, manipulating registers and data and then performing system calls and then manipulating registers and data and then performing system calls, right? We're kind of interleaving computation with environment interactions. So in this case, we write out HTTP 1.0200, okay, RN, 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 and then the contents of that flag. We kind of just built up this string dynamically, it contains the uh, flag value and just sent it straight as a response. Now, if we look at this again, also though, we close the file descriptor to say, hey, we're done communicating, which is going to make sure that eventually, you know, the client, when it goes to read the response, knows we're done communicating. Um, we do that close, we lose that file descriptor, again, interacting with our environment. And ultimately, we get an HTTP response that says HTTP 1.0200 OK and flag. So in some sense, what we just built here is this web server. It's a, still a very simple one. Um, but now we have this program that's executing instructions. It's receiving data from the internet. It could be coming from anywhere on the internet. And then in response, we make a system call to receive those connections to talk to the internet. In response, we perform a different system call that let's say is going to spin up our spinning platter of our hard disk and it's going to pull up the slash flag file. It's going to read from that spinning disk to pull the contents of that spinning disk off and it's going to do more interactions with the environment. It's going to talk now back out to the internet and say, okay, here's the contents of that file. Uh, capital F, capital L, capital A, capital G, all formatted within an HTTP request, HTTP response protocol. Um, and in doing so, we've kind of now written this program that is able to facilitate uh, some sort of actual interesting program, right? It's an interesting program in that anyone on the internet can now spin our hard drive kind of effectively. Um, and we have built a very simple web server.